And Adam lived the easy life Until he gave that rib That rib was even beautiful doll That ever rolled in a crib She taught him how to take a fruit And she didn't even wince And from that day man must work hard And try to get single ever since Woman, woman Queen of every man's home If you would think of the things they know woman alone you show would. A real hip musician of Roman days gained a lot of fame. He played progressive rock and roll. Nero was that cat's name. He took a hat trick to his pen just to hear a new sound. And while he fiddled night and day, his empire roamed went to the ground. Woman, woman, queen of every man's home. If you would think of the things they do, you would leave the woman alone. You sure would. Lucia? Tony, uh, Padre Chiaro Presentale, a mio amico Antonio Alcalde. English, please, Felicia. <laughs> I'm happy to know you, young man. Will you join us? Thank you. It's an honor, Senor Presidente. Oh, Tony's family comes from Santa Cruz, Father. And besides, who doesn't know Pablo Ramirez? Everyone knows you're in exile while your brother is... It does not offend me. All the world knows what my brother Victor is. He chooses to follow General Valdez. I do not. Oh, Felicia, uh, Mr. Ramirez, and uh, bring me bourbon on the rocks. Tony, I asked you to meet us here tonight because we need help. And do you think you can trust me? I'm sure of it. In spite of the fact that I'm for uh, Tom? Of course. Yes, Father, we know that Tara and Rocco are spies for the Generalissimo. And they're using Tara's place for headquarters. But Tony just plays in the band there. And I trust him. Thank you. My daughter is an excellent judge of character, Senor Alcalde. But our situation is a delicate one. My friends in Santa Cruz are preparing to move against the dictator. They wish me to come out of exile. But we are being watched constantly. The Generalissimo will never permit my father to speak out unless... Unless he has someone here to back his play. You are perceptive, Signor. We have heard of a man who can give us this help. His name is Lamont Cranston. He is said to be a friend of L.S. Spectro, the Shadow. I know Lamont Cranston. He's a real jazz fan. You know, I met him at the club about a year ago. And call him for you. Yes, that is the reason we knew you could help us. Will you do it, Tony? Uh, there is danger. The Generalissimo's men will not permit this contact if they can prevent it. I'll make the phone call tonight. Tony, thank you. 
Santa Cruz will also be grateful. And in the meantime, you two better stay out of sight. Cranston at Murray Hill, 37941. And reverse the charges. What number are you calling from? This is Magnolia 0019. What is your name, please? Alcalde. Tony Alcalde. Hello? Mr. Lamont Cranston? Yes, yeah, speaking. I have a collect call from Mr. Tony Alcalde in New Orleans. Will you accept the charges, please? I've heard. I'll accept charges. Go ahead, please. Mr. Cranston? Tony, where have you been hiding? You told me once if I ever needed help to call you. Well, I'm up to my ears in something deep right now. Can you come right down? I've got to see you. What's the trouble, Tony? Uh, uh, I haven't got time to tell you now, Mr. Cranston. They've taken one crack at me already. I, I don't know. I think Tara's behind it. But anyway, I'll, I'll be at the... Check that connection immediately. It was not he who hung up. He will go to New Orleans. He will, Jagendra. He will. Taken care of the Alcalde matter? Just now, but Coronel. See? He was already talking to Cranston on the phone. Idiot. What did he say? He had only time to mention Tara's name before I cut him off. Then he will go direct to Tara's club. He must learn nothing. Nothing, you understand? We don't even know what he looks like. That will be easy. You will have Charlie page him at the airport. After he answers, you will not lose contact. Is that clear? See? Do not make another mistake, Rocco. Amazing country. One airplane ride, you are plunged into another atmosphere entirely. A little like becoming the shadow. Not really. The airplane actually takes you somewhere else. When you become the shadow, you only seem to be somewhere else. Will Mr. Lamont Cranston come to the Delta Airlines ticket counter? Will Mr. Lamont Cranston come to the Delta Airlines ticket counter? My name's Cranston. Cranston call, please. He did? Thank you. 
Sorry, Mr. Cranston, the party canceled your call. Say, uh, you gentlemen got a car waiting for you, or would you like some real fine New Orleans taxi cab service? We're all yours. Good, fine. Right over this way. Come on, man. Say, uh, what hotel are you going to? Maison de Ville. Best hotel there is. You like it there. Oh, by the way, give me your baggage checks. I'll take care of everything. I'll get the baggage. You go right out there to the cab. It's Mark Charlie's. All right, and I'll meet you out there in just a second. Fine. We have come to this beautiful New Orleans as cats to catch a mouse. But now it seems that, uh, that we are the mice. If the pupil may be so bold as to instruct the teacher in the secrets of the mystics in attempting to solve a crime. There are times when the cat must play at the being the mouse. Yeah, so tonight I walk straight into their trap. The famous door, the jazz musician's Carnegie Hall, Citadel of Tara the Beautiful. One word of caution, Lamont. I know, I know. Be careful. You'll become the shadow once too often, and... And there won't even be a shadow left. <laughs> you can never be serious when you are confronted by danger. Or when I confront a beautiful woman? I can see this is not the moment for any words of wisdom from me. No, no. You've given me much wisdom already, Jogendra, and I'm grateful. Good night. Thanks a lot. Come back again. Good night, Tara. Good night. Hey, this place is really rocking tonight, isn't it? Where's Tony O'Callia? Don't see him in the stand. I don't know. Okay, give me a bourbon on the rocks. Yes, sir. Square by a good side man a drink? Man, you make an offer like that, you can't be square. <laughs> yeah. Boy, that last chorus went clear out into space. <laughs> square? Did you say you were square? <laughs> hey, Rocco Sacco. How do you like someone who says he's square when he's really hip, eh? I like straight goods. When you go around strange corners, how do you know who hits you on the head? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you want a square. You got him in Rocker. That cat's big and he's mean. He's a listener. But he runs Terrace Place good. Hey, man, how about some raw on a little rock, eh, man? The usual, huh, Billy? <laughs> yeah. Say, hey, Billy, I, uh, I heard there was a real fine horn man playing around here, a guy named Tony Alcalde. Is he as good as they say? Tony? Oh, man, he blows, he blows, man. <laughs> he blows so good, <laughs> he blew right out of town. Just blew. Didn't tell no one, just took off and didn't come around no more. He's in shy, maybe. <laughs> Doesn't anybody miss him? Tara, maybe. <laughs> but she's the kind of girl who don't miss a man too long. <laughs> Looks to me like she's got a few eyes for you, Daddy-O. <laughs> Billy, how about going back on the stand, huh? Tara, baby, you took the words right out of my little old mouth. <laughs> I'll get that drink up on the stand. <laughs> you run the place, why not use the chairs? Cigarette? No, thanks. Well, you look fresh from up north. I am? You, uh, staying long? 
very possible. Right. Tell me, mister, uh, what else do you collect besides hot jazz records? Oh, lots of things. Money, for instance. And people. Like Tony Alcalde. You wouldn't happen to have any idea where he's gone, would you? But he says he left town suddenly. Is that fact? You tell me. Oh, no. Your voice is much nicer than mine. The waiter made a mistake. This table is reserved. <laughs> for a party of nine. Ten. Mister? Drive me around the block a couple of times, will you? Having a good time, mister? Hey, you got to run, don't you? I'm where the buck is, and this time of night it's on Bourbon Street. Say, you look like a real sport to me. I know where there's a real fine spot where you can see a real good show, you know what I mean? No, thanks. Just drive me around the block. Okay. Say, that spot I was telling you about. Tell me about it. It's got a real fine New Orleans show. Yes. Go on. I'll drive you over there. This place. I didn't like the idea of driving around the block. When I turned around to look, so help me, he just wasn't there. What do you mean he wasn't there? I mean, I'm telling you, he just wasn't. For a moment, I thought I saw a shadow. How can you see a shadow if there ain't nobody there? is capable of transmitting and receiving images. When you become the shadow, you send a powerful image into the mind of another. And he sees not you, but a shadow. You, however, must learn to be more in tune with what others are transmitting to you. You must not be afraid of being overwhelmed. I'm not concentrating at all now, Lamont. I'm sorry, Jigenre. I try to turn you into a philosopher, and you insist on being a soldier. Tony Alcala keeps running through my mind. We know something's happened to him. I must find out why all the secrecy whenever his name is mentioned. You must learn to concentrate on the images. I wish I had your patience, Jigenre, but I haven't. Well, someday. Someday you will understand. Tony mentioned only one name before that phone went dead. Tara. Tara. She's a cold fish. But you can hook even a killer shark with the right kind of bait. Get me the famous door. The uh, trick in deep sea fishing, I am told, is... Uh... Not to be pulled into the water where the sharks can uh, tear you to pieces. If you play it that you have something really hot to sell or trade. Well, good morning. Lamont, look, look, look behind you. Move away. Did you arrange that for me? Clumsy driver almost got you too. Go 
back north, mister. I got nothing to say to you. That truck was about to say plenty. Look, let me tell you something. You're a good-looking hunk of man. I've read your palm. You don't have a long lifeline. Now take my advice and go to a cold climate. I wouldn't want anybody giving me any trouble. There won't be any. Well, I guess we'll be all right. Get in, I'll run you out. That's very nice, Chief. El Espectro. The Shadow. Yes, Senor Presidente, the Shadow. But there is no need for you to be alarmed. The Shadow is no friend of Generalissimo Valdez. Then you have come to help us. Yes, but first you must help yourselves. You're in danger here. Tony Alcali is dead. Valdez agents are ready to move against you. I must have time to discover how and when. Go to this address. You will be expected. Stay there until I return. Oh, but Shadow, how can we get in touch with you if we need to? If you need and only if you need. Call Lamont Cranston at the DeVille Hotel. He will know where to find me. Now you must leave here immediately. The body of Tony Alcalde was found today on a tip phone to police headquarters by an anonymous stranger. No one at the club was able to explain how the body was... Tara! Why are you so interested in my leaving town? Oh, I don't remember anyone trying to kill me. It was nice of you to warn me. No, I always like to deal directly with the boss lady. I'll be seeing you. She is interesting to you? She has qualities. I'm seeing her again this evening. You will want me with you then? Fine, fine, you can stand the music. Mm, I will try. Unexpected reception. Let's sit over here. There are many eyes upon us. As long as we sit tight in the middle of everything, we'll be all right, I think. Hello, Tara. What are you doing back here? I warned you. Did you warn Tony Alcalde, too? What are you getting? Tara. What are they going to play melancholy, baby? They'll play it. Come on, come on. I love that melancholy, baby. Real sad. 
to sit here and watch. the last neighbor. Wait a minute. Hey there, man. That's the sweetest horn blowing I've heard since my record machine blew up. You play any place in town, just tell me where and I'll be there. No, man, I blow out one of those cruise ships, you know, and I just kind of fall by here to get rid of some of that steam after all that square drive aboard. But I got to go back on board now. See you. Look at the bandstand. He says he came from a cruise ship to sit in for a chorus, but he's left his horn up there. There are two of them now. No mistake, perhaps. No mistake, he's gone. What musician leaves his trumpet? It's just a hunch, but Tony Alcaldi was a trumpet player, too. Let's try an experiment. I'll need your help. Move over to the bar. When the regular trumpet player starts to play, hypnotize him. Make him pick up the trumpet this man just left instead of his own. It's the one on the right. We close in one half hour. Well, you can sweep me out with the rest then. I don't want to wait. I give in. The lady says out, so... Um... steps back put down that horn I said and take a couple of steps back and step back now my eyes are right on you right on you 
So don't move a finger. <laughs> I don't know what you did or how you did it, but but you gotta be here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bill Endicott with your 6 o'clock edition of News in the World Tonight. First, the local picture. Here in New Orleans, police are holding two men and a woman for the brutal murder of a well-known jazz musician, Tony Alcalde, trumpet player at the famous door. Police allege Alcalde was stabbed to death by Ramon Rocco Martinez. Held as accomplices are Tara O'Neill and Billy Sanchez. All three prisoners are employees of the club. Our overseas lead story tonight is one that may shock you a little, but there's a lesson in it for all of us. We're about to show you a newsreel of an actual execution, an execution that took place only a few hours ago. The place, Santa Cruz. The victim, Victor Ramirez, confidential aide to Generalissimo Valdez, and until this afternoon, second most powerful man in Santa Cruz. But suppose we let Victor Ramirez tell his own story in his own words. Ramirez, former secretary to our beloved Generalissimo, you have been found guilty of conspiring to undermine the new glory of Santa Cruz and to replace our beloved Generalissimo with the weak, corrupt forces of your brother Pablo Ramirez. Is there anything you wish to say? Only to my brother. My last words are only to him. Pablo, a dying man asks for your forgiveness. I have betrayed you, more than once, ever since we were children. Pablo, I have always been jealous of you. Even in fighting the Generalissimo, I have acted out of envy. I wanted to be the hero of our revolution. that I'm about to die, I speak the final truth. You alone remain the hope of Santa Cruz. Wherever you are, my brother, come out of hiding. Tell our people that the Generalissimo's days are numbered.
might cause the phone to ring. You're Ramirez's daughter. Yes. Cranston speaking. Yes, Felicia. I was afraid of that. All right, I got there as fast as I can. No, no, I'll be very happy to. You don't approve of my going to Ramirez's hideout, do you? Who am I to approve or disapprove? I am merely a man named Jagendra, who has taught you certain ancient techniques of mind. Go ahead, do just as you please. You don't care one way or the other, do you? Well, then why are you sending me disapproving thought waves so strong they've got me practically nailed to the floor? The dictator's gunmen have been looking for Ramirez ever since the day you found him a place to hide. They do not know where he is, but they follow you constantly. I know that. There's one outside now. You have greater powers than most men, but a gunman's bullet will kill you just as quickly. Then I'll have to use a few tricks. You call the things I have taught you tricks? Ah, oh, no, no, but we're a... We're a very modest people, we Americans. The first one to reach the moon will probably say, it was nothing, just a little trick I learned with a rocket. Just remember, each time you use your powers, you run the risk of revealing the shadow's true identity. I'll have to take that chance. Ramirez wants to reveal himself publicly tomorrow. The city's full of hired killers waiting for him. Mr. Cranston is here. Oh. I'm sorry Felicia troubled you, Mr. Cranston. No trouble at all, Senor Presidente. I wish your daughter would trouble me more often. I'll be finished in a few moments. Make yourself comfortable. Excuse me for interrupting, Senor Presidente, but, um... Are your friends in Santa Cruz ready? Yes. So that's why the Generalissimo executed your brother? But the Generalissimo doesn't know when it will begin or who will lead it. Then he would give his right arm to force you to tell him. If I'm stepping out of line, sir, please tell me, but... Well, it isn't like you to risk everything, not at a time like this. I must respect my brother's dying wish. Then your brother has left you no choice, has he? My brother was what he was. In his moment of truth, he told the world what he was. And now he's dead. But everyone in Santa Cruz knows his dying wish. That I pray for his soul and that I speak openly to my people. It helps that you understand, Mr. Cranston. Don't you see it too, Felicia? If I remain in hiding tomorrow, the rumor will spread throughout Santa Cruz that I'm dead. Or worse, that I'm a coward. Yeah. Even Pablo Ramirez is afraid of the Generalissimo, the word will fly. Afraid even to go to church to pray for his brother's soul. And courage will seep out of the people like wine from a broken bottle. That is how fate works. So tomorrow I must take my chances. I have no choice. Mr. Cranston, I know I have no right to ask this, but tomorrow, could you, would you? I'll be there with you.
my friends, fellow countrymen. I have just prayed for my brother's soul. Now I speak to my countrymen in Santa Cruz. Within 24 hours, the Generalissimo will be overthrown. Well, the people love him. Within 24 hours, Santa Cruz will be free. Lamont. Lamont, can you reach me? The Ramirez danger. someone i would be honored to be your father senorita but i'm not even married we are sailing immediately i am sorry but we take no passengers except those we have planned on senorita i may run into your father i'll tell him you were looking for him we still have a chance I'm afraid I can't give out that information, sir. But it's a matter of great urgency. Two sedans. I gave you the license number of one of them, but I'm sure they rented two cars exactly alike. What? Well, I, I don't remember. Well, that is, I'm not even sure that the cars you mentioned were our cars. Your file will show that. May I look? Well, I just can't give out that information to anybody who asks. Oh, excuse me, sir. Avery's on a car. Yes, sir. By the day or by week. Yes, or longer if you like. Yes, I'll be glad to discuss rates with you when you come in. Yes, sir, thank you for calling. <laughs> Francisco Funeral Parlor? Mr. Francisco? craziest thing just happened. A, a man, he disappeared. He came here to, to find out about those cars you rented. And, and, and the file car just sort of moved. This is our only hope of getting him out of New Orleans. The police will never stop a funeral procession. The yacht will be waiting for us at Pilot Town. In one hour, we will be in international waters. Hurry!
Your friends are late. If you do not speak today, by tomorrow you will be dead. Whether I live or die, Santa Cruz will be free. It is you who are late, Colonel. The revolution has already started. You're lying, Presidente. Get ready to take them aboard. Tell the Generalissimo's aide that Pablo Ramirez is here in our hands. Santa Cruz. Father! Why didn't he answer me? I know he saw me. Come on. I've got to get you to a safe place. on board. There's a boat tied alongside. It's probably Cranston. He won't get off this boat alive. Come on, let's find him. Your father's in here. Wait with him till I get back.
we stopped? Why have the engines stopped? Welcome aboard, Mr. Cranston. Up with your hands. Now that you both got me covered, would you mind answering a question? Shoot him now, senor. Condemned men always have a right to speak. You ought to know that, Colonel. This idea of getting your brother into the open by staging a fake execution, whose was it? Yours or the Generalissimo? Our minds work like one. That's why I am the Generalissimo's aide. Where'd he go? Jealous of me? I did not shoot at you. It was... Are you all right, sir? See to Felicia. This time, Victor Ramirez really died. The Colonel's firing squad. Colonel, the revolt has started in Santa Cruz. What has happened? The revolt is underway. The radio, Senor Presidente. They call your name. Your friends have seized the radio in Santa Cruz. And the Generalissimo? The radio says he is dead. And they said, long live freedom. Then... Then why are we fighting each other, you men and I? Aren't we all brothers? Jealousy, hunger for power, lead to this. Put down your guns. Is it so bad to be free, not to have to kill one another? Pablo Ramirez. Is, is it really true? It just came over the radio. We are free. We can go home. Oh. I don't know how you did it, Mr. Cranston, but whatever you did, Santa Cruz will never forget it. Thank you, sir. But I've been well rewarded. I'm sorry I was so impulsive. The pleasure was all mine. Not at all. I found it pleasant, too. I uh, think it is time we all return to shore. I'll make the launch available for you. It is a great victory to win a place in a girl's heart. But even a greater victory to save her country from tyranny. Of men, only the shadow. Of them. 